Okay, if you look at smartphone trends in the past five to seven months, something interesting is happening. Like brands are launching compact phones like OnePlus 13s, Apple killed its Plus series, and now it is coming with the thinnest iPhone ever, iPhone Air. And there's also S25 Edge, which is again thinner. Nothing might also come with a mini phone this year. And now this is the world's thinnest folding phone, Oppo Find N5, like just 4.21 mm. To give you an idea, that's half the size of the latest iPhone Pro Max. But why is this happening now? Like up until now, every brand has tried a thin and compact phone. Apple of all had to kill their mini series due to low sales. The mini had a smaller battery and heating issues. Basically, compact but compromise. Now, internet just loves compact phone. Like our views whenever we mention compact phones are through the roof. So what the duck is happening? Pratik, Techwiser? Let's break this down. Folding box. <laughs> okay. Now, before we get to the world's thinnest phone or any other compact phone, it's important to understand why compact phones have always failed. See, the idea, a small phone with flagship performance, sounds and looks great, but doesn't exactly work the same. Like these compact phones are priced like a flagship and quite match up to their elder flagship siblings. But they have smaller batteries, slightly toned down processor, average camera and the worst sleeping issue. All because it is tiny. That's what she said. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. And after all of these problems or all of these flagship specs, the tiny phone is still priced like a flagship. So the phones aren't tempting to a lot of people. Like consider this iPhone mini. 10% of total iPhone 12 sales came from the mini variant. And it gotten worse. With the iPhone 13 mini, that number dropped below 5%. And two years later, the mini was gone. And speaking of things disappearing, just like the mini, certain online threads are just as sneaky and vanish without you even realizing it. You don't want to leave your data exposed like that, right? That's where Surfshark VPN comes in, the sponsor for this video, who's got you covered when you're surfing the web. Fair thing, we have been personally using Surfshark VPN before they even pitched us for this video. Now the internet is filled with third-party trackers that record what you browse or watch on the internet. So getting a paid VPN makes sense and importantly for three reasons. Number one, Surfshark VPN works on all websites seamlessly with good privacy and you can even unlock content from other parts of the world that are not available in India. Number two, these days, even for generating one image to converting a doc to PDF, the websites ask you to log in. So there's this new option called alternate ID. So next time a website asks for sign up, you can generate a temporary mail or mobile number to sign up for without giving your original mail ID or phone number. Number three, Surfshark is now available at a never seen before price and you get unlimited device access. So you can go to surfshark.com slash techvisor or use code techvisor at checkout to get four months of extra free Surfshark VPN. Also, there is a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no harm in trying. Now back to the video. Now that we have understood the downfall of compact phone, let's have a look at the box of the Find N5. Inside you get the phone, some paperwork, a case, Type-A to Type-C cable and a SIM ejector tool. So the box here is the exact opposite of the phone. Very thick and loaded. Oppo, is it? Get it? Now yes, why are we seeing compact and thin phones again? Well, two reasons. The number one reason is the tech has evolved. There's actual innovation. Like how? Well, for example, take this folding phone. It does three innovative things which weren't possible before. Like this is the world's thinnest smartphone when unfolded. It's barely 4.21 meter. It's so thin that it's barely the thickness of the USB-C port. The previous world's thinnest phone was TechnoSpark. We saw it at MWC. It was about 5.75 mm. To give you an idea, if I stack up three credit cards on top of each other, they almost match the thickness of the phone. That's how slim it is. And even when you fold this thing, it's just about 9 mm, which is about the thickness of an iPhone 16 Pro Max, like very close to a regular smartphone. And even after that, this phone folding phone just weighs in at around 237 grams, lighter than the iPhone Pro Max. Now some part of the weight cutting is done because the back is polycarbonate, so that helps. And don't get me wrong, the back looks beautiful. It is plain white if you look at it from the front, but it has a pattern that is only noticeable if you tilt the phone under a strong light source. Now the major reason for the weight cutting is the frame and hinge. Now the hinge here is made of grade 5 titanium alloy and titanium is known for being durable and lightweight at the same time. Almost all flagships have started using titanium, so Oppo didn't need to put in too many components for the hinge to be durable. Also, the frame is grade 7 aluminium, which is again stronger and more durable. And all of this not only makes this lightweight, but closer to a normal phone. Like the cover display size here is just like a normal 
candy bar phone in my short uses like 80% of the time i have used the phone from the cover screen the power button and the volume rocker is on the right side it has an alert slider which might go extinct very soon so the cover display is good enough that you can comfortably type with two thumbs now the find n5 when unfolded comes with this huge 8.12 inch inner screen Whenever I had to open multiple apps, I opened up this big screen. Like, let it be for booking apps by comparing Rapido and Uber on both the screens, or just checking the facts on Google search for writing video scripts, where the video script is open side by side. Even playing games on the inner display looks very good. However, one thing, watching movies and videos on the inner display is slightly bothersome. There are a lot of black bars on the top and bottom, and even if you zoom in, a lot of content gets cropped, which ruins the content watching experience. Now, the second innovation here is the motherboard. Like usually in other phones, the motherboard and PCB boards are placed separately, but Oppo here has dual stacked the boards, which gives them the extra room to pack in more tech. And because of this, you still have a flagship chip. The Find N5 comes with Snapdragon 8 Elite processor along with 16 GB of RAM. We ran the N2 benchmark and it scores about 17.85 lakh, which is kind of less for 8 Elite. So then we went to battery mode and switched on performance mode, and then you get a score around 22.67 lakhs. And we even ran the CPU throttling test which checks for overheating. The graph here has ups and downs. Just like life, stay strong. Now from the benchmarks, it doesn't perform like a proper Snapdragon 8 Elite. But 8 Elite is so powerful that even at its lowest, it can do most of the tasks easily. Like we played BGMI for half an hour, it can be played max at 90 FPS in smooth graphics. Gameplay was smooth. Now since this is a flagship processor, we pushed it a bit further with a heavy game like COD Warzone. So we played Warzone for more than half an hour and you can play the game max at peak graphics, 60 FPS. The gameplay was good and smooth here, no frame drops as such. Only the camera portion here got warm for some time because this is the exact portion where you have the PCB board. But apart from that, no throttling, nothing. All good. And third innovation is battery. Like this thing packs in 5600 mAh battery and how? Well, silicon carbon battery. It uses the most 10% silicon in any smartphone battery and on top of it, it is still dual cell. This is how thin the 5600 mAh battery is. And this battery here, playing games, watching a lot of content and all easily lasted me one full day. And while silicon carbon lets you pack in a bigger battery, it also lets you charge it super fast. It supports 80 watt fast superbook charging and the charger is inside the box. It takes about 50 minutes to top up the phone. You also get wireless charging with this. Now having said all of that, all is not good with this slim compact phone. There is as of now always one problem camera. Unlike batteries and circuits, camera tech is not that evolved where you can fit a good camera in a small space. Now this does have a big camera island with a triple camera setup, but the photos are very average. The telephoto camera sometimes does click good pictures, but the ultra wide angle camera is just 8 megapixel and I can understand. There's not enough space here to fit in three large sensors along with the battery and all the circuits. In selfies, the cover display and the inner display both have an 8 megapixel selfie camera and the photos from it come out like an 8 megapixel selfie camera. A very okay -ish. Now, in terms of videos, it can shoot at 4K 60fps from the telephoto camera as well as the main camera. However, from the ultra wide angle camera, it can only do 1080p 30fps. Whereas from the front camera, you can do 4K 30fps. Overall, the cameras are very average or slightly below average for a flagship. So this is the Oppo Find N5. Now, since this phone won't be launching in India, so we won't get into the price and worth it or all of that aspect. But come on, man. No matter how many times I see the battery thinness, I get amazed. It is kind of thinner than a coin. But apart from the aspect of phones getting thinner, the technology, the innovation part, the second part of why phones are getting compact and smaller and there's a comeback is demand. As per this counterpoint report, the demand for compact phones are there. Even the YouTube community is full of the same comments, like we need compact phones. So finally, 2025 might be the year for slim and compact phones and I guess internet won, we won. Let us know if you would get a mini or a folding phone that performs like a flagship without any compromises, would you get one? On that note, this is signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, pew, pew.